Okay, so welcome to uh, part three of the uh, tutorial on creating orthographic drawings for your pavilion projects in, uh, in Rhino. And when we left off last time, we kind of had our plan set up, uh, our boundary set up at that scale, eighth of an inch, and we had a section kind of outlined. Now I've done the same thing with my section as before. I just made a little window for myself so I could see uh, the extents of how far I should draw on the page. Um, I also, uh, you know, started drawing lines down. I have my ears off. There we go. So I drew uh, lines down from my plan to indicate where uh, each contour was, and then kind of interpolated, you know, down plane uh, from there. Uh, so, um, you know, using the same technique as in, as in uh, the site section. Um, so uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, which I don't know if I brought up last time, so you know, like we can we can create these construction planes. They're really useful for doing drawings of different types. So, for example, we created a construction plane in video two, I believe, uh, where we can orient ourselves to the orientation of the building or the pavilion, and that allows us to draw kind of orthogonally relative to that orientation. Um, the other thing you can do, though, which some people might find useful, is you can set your viewport to that orientation as well. So I'll go to set view. And remember, I have the C plane assigned right now, and I'll set C plane and just go to top. So it'll center me on my C plane, but you'll notice, importantly, that the orientation has changed. So now I'm oriented to my section. I'll make my life a little bit easier in terms of drawing that section. Um, and uh, before I get too deep into that section, though, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, kind of add uh, more information to my uh, to my plan to kind of finish up my plan. There's a few things uh, that I want to add here. So first of all, you know, when we're drawing our pavilion thing in a uh, site plan, we're mostly kind of looking at the roof, uh, right? We're looking kind of from above um, because we're more interested in how the kind of building is situated in the landscape and all that, all that kind of stuff. But when we zoom in to a closer scale, we want to actually be cutting through. Uh, I believe your, um, I believe your uh, assignment sheet in ARC 201 actually specifies that your plan cut should be four feet above above uh, the ground or four feet above above the floor level. Um, so what we want to do is uh, is add some detail to our plan, uh, show these uh, structures kind of cut through. Uh, we want to add some detail uh, to the site at this scale drawing. So I've also brought my uh, my aerial image in here, um, and again at this scale, I'm going to be you know adding uh, the same kind of detail as I had before, indicating differences in in soil, indicating vegetation. Uh, I'm going to add some detail uh, to my bike path. I'm going to add this railing uh, that you see along the edge of the bike path. Um, so I'm going to add all that kind of detail uh, to my uh, to my drawing. Um, the other thing I want to do uh, is, and we talked a little bit about this before, is we're going to add some structure. So you can see I've I've um, I've kind of drawn like a grid for myself. It's a four by four foot grid. You can use a grid. You can not use a grid. It really depends on your project. Um, but in this uh, design, I think it makes a lot of sense to use that grid. So I just drew a quick grid for myself and kind of made sure that everything was lined up. You can see I have a two foot increment. But anyway. Um, so I made sure that everything was kind of lined up with that. Um, so I'm going to go through and just start kind of drawing like what these uh, what these structures would look like. So the first thing I want to do really is I'm going to go ahead and throw each of these outlines of my roofs onto a, a dashed line layer. Um, because even though we're um, just going to draw kind of like the, the structures cut through, it, it would still be in, uh, useful, especially in a project like this, to indicate, uh, you know, like where um, uh, where the roof overhang is. And so the convention for drawing things that are above the plan cut is to use a dashed line. So I'm going to start uh, by just drawing a line. And I have my heaviest line weight assigned here. I'm going to offset that line. I'm going to do uh, maybe like an 8-inch wall. Again, you can do whatever you think makes sense for the material you're using. Uh, where uh, 
So I'll set it to eight inch. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this option cap to flat. And that will automatically join the offset line to the original line so it becomes a thickened outline. Just like that. And I'm gonna do the same for the rest of my structures. And this guy over here is actually my bathroom. Um, but it's not totally enclosed, so what I'll do is I'll throw that here in a sec. I'm just repeating that offset command for each wall. Okay. Now, I think uh, you should refer to the um, 201 assignment sheet for uh, instructions on um, how large the bathrooms need to be and stuff like that. I'm just going to draw a couple bathroom stalls here, and um, uh, and then you know put in uh, uh, kind of equipment. Um, but again, refer to your assignment sheet uh, for uh, specifically what um, uh, what the size requirement is uh, for those. Um, so I'm just going to do kind of. Uh, now, let's try six feet. Not working for me. Huh. What's that? Yeah. Okay. Small. I'll explode these lines so I can deal with them Scale one diesel I can match that up. Oops. All right. I believe that's correct, right? We have the same size. Yeah, okay. So and then what I'll do is I'll just join these walls together. So for example, I'm just gonna explode this one. Get rid of those lines, just trim, and join the adjacent walls. So again, with this one, I'll explode. I'm deleting the lines at the end. I'm selecting both lines and using the command trim. I'll join them together. Okay, and then the other thing we want to do here, obviously, is to indicate uh, that there is a door. So, um, actually, uh, let's make a rectangle. I'll we'll make a 36 inch door. Oh, that's the wrong side uh, orientation, but anyway, so make a three foot rectangle. That's going to be our cutout. Trim everything together. Might have a duplicate line there, you might not. That looks good. All right. And then we need to draw our door. So I'm going to use a lighter line weight for the door itself. And probably want to do like two inch. I'll center it on the end of the wall. I'll rotate it around the corner, show the swing. And then I'm going to use the arc command. And I'm going to draw a dashed line. 
again to indicate movement in this case. And that shows the door swing. Let's copy that to the other side. Okay, so there we have our bathrooms. The other thing I want to indicate here um, is like uh, uh, the, the equipment that goes into the bathrooms, the uh, sinks and toilets, etc. cetera. Um, there's a couple things I want to add from there. And I'm going to do the same thing as I've done to get my trees. Oops. I blocked. And I'll just search for, I don't know, let's try bathroom. First, bathroom blocks. So we have a bunch of toilets. We've got some sinks, bathtubs. Uh, this one has urinals. Uh, these look like they're all elevation. Let's try it. Let's start with this one. I'm also going to need a sink. If this one does what I want. I'm just looking for stuff that's kind of simple, right? I don't want to kind of busy up my drawing with really complicated sinks and stuff like that, but uh, maybe this is stretched. I'm wondering why it looks so strange. These are mostly back, but uh, well, what does this one have? Oh yeah, this one has sinks. Great. Um, and then maybe we can also adapt one of these to be a water fountain, which is something we want to include. Okay. Drag that block in. Again, select import. Um, explode this. Oops, I don't know if I wanted to do that. I'm just going to select the code that I want right now. I'll go for a simple one. Delete everything else. Again, this is a block. We'll do block edit. Select all the lines, put them on the layer we want, and make sure that the layer properties, display color, line type, print color, are all assigned to uh, by layer. All right. This. Where my drawing is. Right. That's not quite the right size. I'll rotate it. Hey, okay. oh, that's a little big. So a very simple bathroom. I'll do the same for my sink. Okay, so there's my sink. I'm just going to mirror this. With the option copy turned on, and that'll be my other bathroom. Okay. Um, so there's my bathrooms, and I'm actually I'm just going to copy this one more time. I use the command orient, copy and change its position at the same time. A little water fountain over here. That's fine. Okay. Um, so, uh, as you recall, we kind of exploded this and made it into a um, lighter outline. Again, because of because of this plan being, uh, you know, cut through, what we would actually see here is a couple of different things. We'd be seeing like, you know, kind of like the trunks of our trees coming down. So we want to show, uh, I'm going to show maybe a couple circles. Just to kind of indicate that.
You may even want to adapt. Our uh, opening here a little bit. Okay. So those would indicate like where our trees are coming up. I would also, I'm going to put this on a lighter line weight. So I'm just going to put this on the super light line weight. Again, this is technically above the plane cut, although we want to indicate where that canopy is. It could make it a dash line. I would maybe want to use a tighter dash line so it doesn't get quite so busy in my plan. But again, I can always refer back to how that's reading, you know, in my print preview. Um, but I want to kind of make that a lighter line weight. It's not really the focus of, of our um, of this drawing, although we want to make sure that we show that it's there. Okay. Now the other thing I want to include in this drawing is going to be my uh, my structure, like I mentioned. Now I'll talk more about what the kind of structure of this thing is, but for now, in, in uh, when I draw my section, but for now I'm just going to draw kind of uh, some columns, basically. You know, we're just going to draw kind of like a skeleton for the shape of our pavilion. We're not going to get too in the in the weeds on what the structure really is. So I'm going to use the re uh, rectangle command. I'm going to go center. This is one of the reasons that I found it useful to um, uh, draw my structural grid. So my structural grid is kind of separate from the actual the surface of my pavilion. I'm going to do the same for a few of my structures here. Sweet. I want to do the bathroom as well. Um, I guess I could do this one differently in a way. Um, I could make the stalls kind of separate from the wall if I wanted to have that same structure uh, kind of going on. Um, so what I'll do is I'll I'm just going to hide some other stuff here real quick so I can see a little easier. Contours. Okay, so maybe what I'll do here. First placement section. Okay. And then I'm going to separate these spaces. The easiest way to do that is kind of just start by just moving them out. Let me make sure I select not the control points. There we go. I want to leave the structure behind. Looks good. I'll do the same thing as before. I'll draw a line and offset it. And then over here, I'm just going to edit these control points. Right. Actually, shift that back just a little bit. It's kind of awkward. Okay, should be fine. So then our bathrooms are kind of like a separate structure underneath this, uh, underneath this roof. Okay, cool. So um, the other thing um, uh, that we could indicate, if we wanted to, we could like indicate some of the framing that's happening above. And again, I would do that with a dash line. I might even at this point, I might add like another dash line. So I can kind of have some variation of what's going on above. Just are that color already. Okay. And again, I'm just going to copy it to each grid line. So 
I can edit all these lines at the same time if I just select them all, go to points on. Remember that's points on, not edit points on. A couple more over here. Points on. And I could even use the orient command and scale it by one dimension. Change the length. As I'm going. All right, great. And then, so I want to set uh, some properties for that layer. Make it light. And what I might do, a couple options. Let's see how this looks. I'm going to go back to my preview there. That's not doing much for me, is it? It's a slightly finer line. I might edit that just a little bit. And again, the way to do that is go Options. Go to uh, Line Types. Hidden too, I'm not sure where that came from to be honest, but oops, what just happened there? Oh, this is way too big, that's what's going on. <laughs> okay, so let's try like oh five. That's pretty good. Oh, you know what? Uh, we do want to be careful that we don't change. Uh, let's see. This might be the line. Oh, no, I, I need that uh, backpack line. Anyway, yeah, it is, it is careful to be mindful of, um, or good to be mindful of, uh, you know, like changing line weights, changing line types that may be already in use in your site plans. Um, one thing you can do is just make a separate file. Obviously, we can do that by just selecting everything, go to file, Export selected and save it as a Rhino file. Um, I don't think that that hidden to, yeah, if I look at my layers, it's not in use by anything, so I can change it. Um, you can also, of course, you can just make a new line uh, and type if we find that that's an easier solution, but let me go 0 0.05, comma 0 0.05, see how that looks. I might, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make the space a little smaller than the dash. That'll help the line kind of read a little bit tighter. Put a really light line. Turn off my uh, drill grid there. That's reading pretty well, actually. It's starting to look pretty good. Remember, we can always type zoom and hit one. Type in one or just hit that button one to one. That will give us a sense of how our drawing is reading so far. Okay. Actually, I think I want this to be on a heavier line. Um, awesome. So uh, the other thing I want to do here is I'm going to deal with kind of um, uh, what the surface of my floor is. There's a couple of things to be mindful of there. Uh, one of them is. Uh, you know, like, what is the nature of the floor? If it's a concrete floor, like kind of slab that's cast, um, uh, what you probably want to do is indicate, you know, like the score lines where there would, you know, like in a sidewalk that have, a, sidewalks have like breaks in them or score lines in them, um, you know, to uh, our control joints or if and when the concrete kind of cracks. Um, what we want to do is, um, uh, in this case, we, we, we chose to represent the, remember we chose to represent this, oops, turn the layer off, but this is going to be like a decking, like a metal decking that's elevated above the ground. And so what I want to do is kind of indicate like what's the grain of that, um, you know, with a, with a le much lighter line weight. Um, so I can use a hatch pattern to do that. Maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll create uh, a couple of different zones here. Obviously, we can see the structure is kind of oriented one way in certain places and, and other ways in other places. 
Let's go like one zone at a time here. And you know, you'll have to kind of think carefully about what makes sense. I'm gonna use my outline layer. Like starting over here, draw my hatch. And I'm gonna use uh, hatch one. Um, I have to rotate it, I guess, 30 degrees. And I want to scale it so that's an appropriate dimension. Let's say I'm using a metal deck panel that's like six inches. I'm actually going to measure that because I don't necessarily know that that's six inches. In fact, it's not. But seven. So remember, you can always edit a hatch. Just go over to the select the hatch, go to the properties panel. I'm going to scale it down until it's roughly where I want it to be. And I can just draw, actually, a line at six inches. Use the reference here. Just to come down just a little bit more. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect, but precise enough. OK, that's the scale I want to use is four. Again, I'm going to do, what would that be, 150? Um, okay. I'm going to make a polyline for this one. Right spot there. Thirty. Oh no. Right. right. Oh, that scale's wrong. Oops. I guess I got the wrong outline there. My outline should not be on that layer. That if you want that on my light layer, that one I just drew. Catch. Remember, our scale was four. All right. Oh, and one thing I kind of just did wrong. is I drew my hatch uh, below where my wall is. So there's a couple ways I could fix that. I could fill my wall, um, you know, with a solid hatch. Um, but I don't want to do that. What I want to do, just finish this real quick. What I would want to do is, um, uh, so yeah, so I don't want my decking to show like inside my wall, right? That should be like solid wall. What I do want is, um, is for my, uh, so like I said, I could fill the wall. I don't really want to deal with that. But what I can do is I can edit the control points of a hatch. So I can just select my hatch, put points on, move those points. It's just like we're editing the outline that I used to draw them originally. But the, it's, it's only affecting the hatch. I may just delete it. Problematic. Oh, this one's actually a little more complex. See, we need to kind of trim it around, um, which means I need to redraw the, uh, the boundary that I've used to generate it. Of course, I just deleted it. There's another way, though, 
get that boundary back, which is to use the command dupe border. It stands for duplicate border. And that will turn that uh, the outline of that hatch back into a curve. And then I can just easily go in here, add the outlines I want to track from that. I'm trimming the right line. There we go. Join. And I'll hatch that outline. Over here, move those control points. Awesome. All right. That's looking pretty good in terms of uh, how it reads. We could we could mess around. That might be a little dark. Those hatches. We'd mess around with putting that on our lighter hatch layer. That's a little nicer. To ask. Okay. Um, so then I could I'm going to go through and do the same. Uh, with the ground around uh, my site. Uh, I'm going to add hatches to, uh, again, reveal like what the ground is in terms of soil, in terms of planting. I'm going to add some other plants if I need. I'm going to add some detail to my bike path. I'm also going to change the line type of this dash so it looks more like the aerial image. That kind of stuff. I'm also going to mess with the alignment of these guys, make them a little lighter. Um, just, just kind of clean it up and make it read better at this scale, right? Okay, and uh, so I'll show you what that looks like in the beginning of the next uh, video.